Hello, happy crafters. I am back with another Dollar Tree DIY video. And I have a bunch of these bunny cutouts that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I thought it would be a lot of fun to take these bunnies and see what we can come up with for making some really fun decorations for Easter. It all just goes away. The things I plan to say, oh baby. So for my first project, I'm going to use one of these Dollar Tree bunnies and I'm going to remove the hanger because I don't need that for this bunny. And for this bunny, I'm going to use a piece of this Dollar Tree self-sticking tile. These tiles are so much fun to work with and they have a raised pattern on them, which makes them perfect for painted projects. So first I'm going to take the bunny and put it onto the tile. And then I'm going to cut out around the edges because the tile and the adhesive will actually come apart this way. And it's much easier to have the adhesive part come off before you finish cutting out the entire project. So next I use some Dollar Tree wood glue and put that all over the bunny cutout. And then I secured the bunny to the tile. And once it was dry, I looked at it and I thought this is gonna be a little bit difficult to cut out. So using a Sharpie marker, I just traced around the bunny onto the tile. And honestly, if I do this again, I'm going to do that step first instead of gluing the tile to the bunny. It does come off very easily, as you can see. And now it will be much easier to cut out the bunny pattern on the tile. And once I was done cutting out the tile, I did go back to my bunny and gave it another coat of the wood glue and then I took my tile cut out and secured it onto the wood piece. Now, once I had time to dry, I took some chalk paint and I painted the entire tile. Now you can do whatever color you want. For myself, I find that I like the lighter color on the bottom. So I mixed some sandstone colored chalk paint along with a little bit of a tan chalk paint to make it look more like an antique ivory. Now, once that was dry, I took some rose colored acrylic paint and I just dabbed a little bit of that onto a paintbrush and then I lightly went over the rabbit. By going over the tile with the acrylic paint lightly, it really picks up all of the little details of the tile on the rabbit. And once that was dry, I took some different floral greenery stems and arranged it onto the bunny just to make sure I was going to be happy with how this looked. So I took two big leafy stems and I attached it to either side of the rabbit. So it's almost like in the middle of where his neck would be. And then I attached a small eucalyptus stem to each of those pieces of the greenery. And then using some Dollar Tree ribbon, I decided to make a bow. So my bow is going to be pretty much a simple bow, but I wanted the bow to have a little bit of longer tail. So I did cut those out separately and then secured them in place with some hot glue. Now, once that was done, I took several like wrap sections of the Dollar Tree ribbon and secured it with some floral wire. And then I took a smaller piece of the ribbon and secured that with hot glue around the center. So you won't be able to see that wire. And if you're not very talented with making bows, this is actually a very easy way to make a bow.
And I wanted my bunny to have a tail, so I made a pom-pom with some fuzzy yarn and I attached the tail. And this is the finished project. And I really like that rose color on the tile. I think it looks really pretty. Now for this project, I'm going to be using Mod Podge and some Dollar Tree tissue paper. So I'm going to coat the white side of the rabbit with a nice coat of Mod Podge. And I'm covering all parts of the wood cutout. So the top, the ears, the feet, everything is getting a coat of the Mod Podge. Next, I took a piece of the tissue paper and I just put that onto the rabbit. And if you're using the Mod Podge and you have a pretty good coat going on, you will be able to move that tissue paper around to get any wrinkles out. And once I was happy with the tissue paper, I went ahead and cut off the excess tissue paper around the cutout. I did leave a little bit because I'm going to secure that onto the back of the cutout. And then I took some Mod Podge and put it on the back of the bunny. And then I folded over the edges of the tissue paper and secured them in place. And the tissue paper is really forgiving. And if you can find the pattern tissue paper, it looks so pretty. Now, once the tissue paper was all glued down, I did take some Dollar Tree ribbon and I put that around the neck of the rabbit. Then I flipped it over and secured each side to the back. And I think you can see that I have that little finger protector over my finger. You can find these at the Dollar Tree too. And now I wanted the rabbit to have a little bit of something extra on that burlap ribbon. So I took some of the lace crocheted style of ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I cut it in half. Then I just applied some glue to the ribbon. and then put the crocheted ribbon over top of it and again secured it on the back of the wood cutout. And I really like having a little bit of floral on these projects. So again, I'm using stems from other projects that were like leftover pieces. And I used a Dollar Tree sticker for the flower. Now this rabbit is actually going to sit up. So I have one of these Dollar Tree shelf sitter signs and I'm just gonna apply some Dollar Tree ribbon to the bottom portion of the sign. There was a little bit of blue that was showing through on the sign and I didn't want that to show through for my Easter rabbit display. So I just used that Dollar Tree Easter ribbon and hot glued it to the bottom or the base of this display. And I did go ahead and put that ribbon all the way around the front, the back, and the sides. And right now, Dollar Tree has so many Easter items for crafting. So if you haven't been to Dollar Tree in a little while, I would highly encourage you, go check them out so you can find these cutouts as well as the Easter ribbons and colors. And once my base was completed, then I took some floral foam and I cut some really thin pieces and then cut them down again so they would be small. So these are going to fit into that base. And then I just used some hot glue to secure them to the base. And these are going to be on the back side. And you don't have to have the floral foam completely go all the way down the base. Just putting a couple of pieces is sufficient. 
Next, I put a little bit more hot glue onto each of those floral foam pieces. And then I attached the rabbit to the floral foam. Now I did go ahead and use some floral foam in the front as well. And this will help to keep the rabbit sitting upright. Then I took some Dollar Tree flowers and I cut off just the flower part. And this was actually a really nice bundle of flowers. There's so many flowers on one bundle. This is just one bundle of flowers. I also took some purple flowers. This was another Dollar Tree floral piece. And then these little yellow pieces, I like those. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them off as well. Look at how many separate flowers you can get out of just one Dollar Tree stem. Then I just took all of those flower pieces and just put them into the base. So that base is going to be covered with flowers. They're all spring flowers that are going to be filling up the bottom of the base and look like they're overflowing. And while I do like the shapes and cutouts that they have at the Dollar Tree, I do like to make them more three-dimensional by adding different elements. And look at that, that is so cute. And here is my finished tissue paper bunny rabbit. I think it looks great. I am so pleased with how this turned out. And I don't really think it looks like it came from Dollar Tree. What do you think? All right, I've got another bunny rabbit that needs a makeover. And this is a fun one. So I've got a bunch of these floor dusters from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna make a fuzzy bunny. So I'm gonna use my hot glue gun and all I'm gonna do is glue those floor dusters onto the rabbit. So I'm starting with one piece across the front and I'm not gonna put the hot glue everywhere, just where that duster is going to lay. And then I'm gonna smooth down the duster and I'm going to put another one on the top. But by smoothing it down, it makes it so you won't be able to tell where one duster is and another duster is. And then I'm just going to butt those up close together and then rough up the material. And I have to warn you, even though this is an adorable Easter bunny to use for your decorating, Doing this with these dusters, it gets really messy. These dusters shed so much. So once I had those two dusters on attached to the cutout, then I used my scissors and just cut the excess duster away. And having that brown back on the rabbit makes it really easy to see. So if you're gonna do this, I would encourage you to secure the dusters to the white side of the rabbit. So that way it's easier to see where you need to cut off the remaining duster. And it doesn't have to be perfect around the edges because you can go back and trim it up when you're almost done. But I think you can see that this is a very messy project. It's very fun, but it does make a mess. And once I had the cutout done from those two dusters, then I went back and added the floor dusters to the ears. So if you're really careful when you're making this project, you can use three of the floor dusters and one of the wood bunny cutouts from the Dollar Tree to make this fuzzy rabbit. And there is the bunny. I think it's so adorable. And there is the mess. Now I did wanna add a tail to this rabbit. So I'm going to be using my pom-pom maker. And I've actually made a video that shows you how easy it is to make pom-poms. Yes, you can do this without a pom-pom maker, but having a pom-pom maker makes it so much easier and it's actually really fast. 
Not quite as fast as my hands are moving right here, but it is very, very fast to make pom-poms of multiple different sizes using these pom-pom makers. And I will leave a link in the description box below in case you wanted to check out the pom-pom makers for yourself. They're really affordable. And just like that, I have a pom-pom, which is going to be my bunny's tail. Next, I just put some hot glue onto the center bottom portion of the rabbit cutout and then I secured the pom-pom to the rabbit. And I really like making collars for these bunnies. I don't know why, but I just really like the way that looked. So I got the chiffon ribbon on Amazon and I love that color. It's kind of a sagey green. To me, that just really looks like spring. So I just took a piece of that chiffon ribbon and put that on the neck of the rabbit and secured it with hot glue. And then I made a simple bow, literally just tying a bow out of the ribbon. And this ribbon is so pretty because it has like a frayed edge. And once I was happy with my ribbon, I did go ahead and cut the tails down a little bit so they weren't quite so long. And then I just used a little bit of hot glue to secure the bow in place. And that bunny is done. I love how this turned out. It is so adorable. It looks so pretty on a shelf and definitely a very nice addition for Easter decorating. And yes, I have another bunny that needs to have a makeover. And for this rabbit, I am going to be using some scrapbook paper that I had. So I did give it a medium coat of the Mod Podge. And then I took the scrapbook paper and put it onto the rabbit. And the scrapbook paper I had is not quite large enough for the entire rabbit. So I did two pieces of scrapbook paper and I made sure to keep the pattern the same. Next, I took my Cricut scraping tool and just scraped all of that paper down to make sure it's really secured to the rabbit. Then I cut out the excess paper. And to give this a nice finished edge, I used a little bit of Dollar Tree sandpaper and I just went around the edges of the rabbit. So this will make it easier to remove the excess scrapbook paper and you don't have to cut it and make sure that it's perfect. Now I did go ahead and make a pom-pom using some jute twine. This was actually a really difficult pom-pom to make and you could see in the center, you could still see the separation. So after I secured the pom-pom onto the rabbit, then I did use a little bit of hot glue all the way around the center so I can push down the top portion of the pom-pom down so it won't look like it's two separate pom-poms on this rabbit. And next I took a bunch of different ribbons that are kind of farmhouse style and I stayed with the more neutral tones. So I just used different ribbon that I already had and made two matching stacks of this ribbon. So if I had six pieces of ribbon on one stack, I also had six pieces of the same ribbon on the other stack. And I did go ahead and dovetail or swallow's tail the ends of the ribbon. Then using some jute twine, I just tied a knot around the center of the stack of ribbon. And then I was able to move the individual ribbons out and separate them a bit. And I did this with two sets of ribbon because I want to join them together like that and make a bigger bow. So I'm going to attach that to the rabbit. And I'm doing this so that the flat pieces, the flat sides will meet up in the center.
Then I took some jute twine and wrapped that around my hand because I'm going to make a bow that's gonna go in the center of the larger bow that I made. And then I took another piece of jute twine and tied that around the jute twine I had wrapped around my hand and then tied it into a knot. So this is going to be the center of the bow that's already in place on the rabbit. And with placing that bow into the center, this rabbit is just about done. And here is the finished plaid bunny rabbit. I guess he would be more of a neutral farmhouse style. I really like how this turned out. And I actually made this for a gift for one of my coworkers. Now this one is very easy. So I'm going to use a wood round and I have a larger wood round because this one is a Dollar Tree wood round and the bunny is a little bit too big. So this is a 14 inch wood round that I got on Amazon and I'm going to use that. So next I took some folk art wax and I painted the wood round with the wax and then I just removed the excess wax from the round. And if you don't have the folk art wax, you can actually take any type of paint and add some water to it and make it pretty watery and apply it to the surface like this that you want to stain. And once you've put the watered paint onto the wood round or whatever you're going to stain, just wipe off the excess and you'll have a nice stained look. So while my wood round was drying, I did go ahead and use some of that ribbon that I had used on the fluffy bunny earlier. And I made a smaller bow that would fit on his collar. So I secured that chiffon ribbon to the center or the neck of the rabbit. And again, secured it to the back. I like having the extra ribbon on the sides because I, I don't want it to look like it's just ending at the sides of the rabbit. That's why I always like to secure it onto the back of the piece. And then I glued my little bow onto the ribbon. And then I determined where I'm going to set this rabbit onto that wood round. And I did have my hot glue gun set on a higher temperature so it doesn't start to dry too quickly. And then I secured the rabbit onto the wood round. This was such an easy project, minimal painting involved, and I think it looks great. And I did add a Dollar Tree pom-pom for a bunny tail. And yes, I still have one more of these rabbits that needs to have some bling. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this rabbit with burnt umber paint. This is just acrylic paint and I think I got a little bit too much paint onto the rabbit, but that's okay. I can remove the excess, it's not that big of a deal. And after my paint had dried, I am going to use some of this crackle coat. This is a top coat, it's made by Folk Art, and this stuff is so much fun. So I am going to put a pretty thick layer of the crackle coat. This is what's going to cause the crackling. I'm going to put a pretty heavy layer of that onto this wood cutout. And I am trying to keep my strokes all going in the same direction. And once the crackle coat had dried, 
Then I took some acrylic paint and applied that to the rabbit. Now I wanted big crackles, so I'm doing a thicker coat of the acrylic paint. If you want finer crackles, you use less paint. And on the instructions on the bottle, it does tell you to make sure that you have your paint going in one direction. Don't go different directions with your paintbrush. You wanna keep your paint in one direction. And you can see the paint is already crackling. This is just a tan acrylic paint. I thought it would look really nice and you'd be able to see the crackles better. This is so much fun to get a really aged appearance on a project. So it's not going to look like it's brand new. This will make it look like it's old. And once my paint was dry, this was the end result. I love how this looks. This just looks so farmhouse. I just think this is awesome. And next I took some of this material from the Dollar Tree. You get three different materials in one package. So I just wanted to try out each of these materials and see which one I liked best for the rabbit. And I think I really like the sunflowers the best. So my collar and bow will be the sunflowers. I really like that. So I went ahead and made the collar first and then secured it to the back of the rabbit. And there is so much material that comes in this. It's easy to make a simple bow. And then I glued the bow onto the collar And I wanted the tails to look like they were kind of wrinkled up or rustled up. So first I cut the tails of the bow down just a little bit so they're a little bit shorter. And then I did do that swallow's tail on the ends of the ribbon. And you do that simply by cutting the bottom corner off. Then I used my hot glue gun and put a little bit of hot glue onto the rabbit. And I lifted up the material so that it's not going to be exactly flat on the bunny. And I did that with each of the tails. And next I wanted to add a flower. So I added a couple of leaves to one side of the rabbit and then I added a few more leaves on top of the first two. And then I took a Dollar Tree Gerber Daisy and secured that in the center. And here is the end result. Oh my goodness, this rabbit is so cute. I, if you've never used crackle paint before, I would highly encourage you to do it because this just looks so country. I love it. And I love all of the rabbits that I created. What did you think? Which one of these rabbits was your favorite? Leave a comment below and let me know which rabbit you like the best. I think all of them are my favorite personally. By going to Dollar Tree and finding different pieces like this, you can make some really nice affordable decor for your home. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You just have to get a little creative. And hopefully I showed you how to do that in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.